Genesis 37 from verse 20 to 28. And we know that we all, uh, we usually rise up to read the first Bible reading whenever the preaching is about to start. Let's be on our feet together as we are going to take Genesis chapter 37, 37, 20 to 28. Then we also read verse 36. Please, let's have it on screen. Thank you. Let's be on our feet. God bless you. Let's be on our feet. In honor of God's word, let's rise up together. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. Please re reduce the monitor here. Those of you are the, uh, uh, the people. Reduce the monitor and increase the other ones. Reduce the monitor. This is my stage monitor here. Are they there? Are the media people there? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Can we do it together? Oh, wait. Now, let's not forget that when we are in God's presence, what did I say we should always do? We should put our phones aside. My own will not be here. If not that, they always program it for monitor. To monitor those online. Let's put our phones aside. You can't hear God and man at the same time. So if you have your phone with you, put it in your bag. If you feel like sleeping, the ushers have uh, sweets at the back. You know? But me, I always believe that it's babies that take sweets when they are in class. Or you are in God's presence and you are taking sweets. You are a baby Christian. Mature Christian. We open his eyes. What are we looking out for? We are looking out for our own word from God. Hallelujah. Can we read after the count of three? One, two, and let's go. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say, some evil beasts have devoured him, and we shall see what shall, will become of his dreams. They said, let's cast him into the pit. Let's say, an evil beast devoured him. Let us now see what will become of his dreams. Can I tell you? The only reason why you have enemies is your dreams. I'm just understand that. Because some of you are wondering, Pastor Kinemoni, what do I have that is making the enemy to attack me? It is not what you have now. It is what they have seen in the spirit that you will become. That's why they are fighting you. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus, they will not succeed over you. That vision that God has for you, you will get there. I say you will reach it. In the name of Jesus. Can you see what, was angry, what got them angry? Let's see what becomes of his dreams. That's the anger. Let's see what becomes of his dream. Let's see. I'm telling you, men we told I. I read one Christian book many years ago. He came to set the captive free by Rebecca Brown. She talked about the third eye. It's somewhere here. The evil people, they have it here. Now, with that kind of eye, they look and look into destinies of people. You'll be watching. Why are they looking at me like this? They are looking at the inside. They are killing me. And when they see that you carry something, they notice it. And they begin to fight you because of it. Oh, yeah, let's read on. At 25 Bossy prayer meeting. It might be no job. Verse 21. Let's go. One, two, three, and let's go. And Reuben had it. And he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. I pray for you. Among your enemies, God will raise your Reuben. Yeah. The Reuben that we always antagonize them for every of their plans against you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Let's go on. Let's go on. Let's go on. And Reuben, let's go, verse 22, let's go together. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. That was his plan. He was saying, if you put him in the pit, I will come back to take him. Let's go, let's go, verse 23. And it came to pass, when Joseph come unto his where are you? Am I fast? Let's read. Oh yeah, let's go on to it again. And it came to pass. When Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coats, his coat of many colors that was on him. Verse 24. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Verse 25. Let's go. And they sat down to eat bread. And they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, 
a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their, their camels, bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. Let's go on. We stop at 28. And Judas said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? What will we gain? Let's go. Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him for he is our brother and our flesh and his brethren were content. Who won't kill him? Who will sell him into hardship? 28. Then there passed by Midianite merchant men and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver and they brought Joseph into Egypt. Now jump to verse 36 before we sit down. Verse 36 before we sit down. Verse 36 before we sit down. Let's go together one to and let's go. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. Now before you sit down please. Now let's look at the hardship in the life of Joseph. Can you imagine? You just, just dream it. Assume that you are the one. You know, you are going with joy to your family members. In I use family members in case you don't have brothers. And getting to their mix with joy. Ah, but that me, I, 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 I me, or I bro me, you know, I don't know, whatever you call them. And all of a sudden, from behind, one of them slap you. And the thing that makes you unique, your coat of many colors, they just remove it. They collected it from him. And the next thing, your own people carried you and threw you into the pit. How do, will you feel if you are Joseph at that time? Now, he was, he was naked and placed in the pit. And I believe that by the time they would have been stretching their hands to bring him out, he would be thinking in his heart, maybe my brothers have for, decided to forgive me, you know? Maybe my brothers have decided to forgive me. But all of a sudden, they brought him out and he had them. They were discussing how much. Is it goat, dog, or ram? How much? And they agreed 20 pieces of silver. And I believe you will still be thinking, maybe they were talking about one of my father's sheep. You know, my brothers are fond of doing that. And all of a sudden, he saw that they handed him over. How do they uh, uh, buy slaves? They put locks, chains on them. And they were dragging him. And I know if you are Joseph, what will you be doing? You'll be crying. You'll be wondering, Egbo, Emi Mani, Joseph Mani, Abro Yi Mani, Emi Mani, Ah, Egba Mi, Ibo Nong Be Milo. You know, that was the condition of Joseph. Now sit down, God bless you. Thank you. You know, that was the condition of Joseph as at that time. It was a difficult time in his life. It was a difficult time. And when these Midianites bought him, Joseph thought he has even gotten to his destination until they got to Egypt, those ones now sold him again to Potiphar as a slave into Potiphar's house. Beloved, I'm talking about the personal difficulty in the life of Joseph. Now, and I want to use it to teach you four things today that you must not allow challenges to do to you. Did you hear me? Four things. I want you to learn it. Everyone will face challenges. I've always told you every time I talk to you that there is no level in life where you will be free of challenge. The only place where you can be free of challenge is in the mortuary. The only place where a person can be free of challenge is in the grave. Because that's what the Bible says. He, pre he, he prepared a table for me where? In the presence of my enemies. Now, that's why the Bible also says in Psalm 110, 110 verse 2. He said, rule, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. In the midst of your enemies. How do you do it? That's what I want to show you today. In the midst of challenge. How did Joseph live this life? That Joseph eventually became great. Now, don't forget I told you they are fighting you not because of anything. Not because you are handsome. Not because you are beautiful. But because you have a beautiful destiny. What is inside of you that you are born to fulfill is the reason why they are attacking you. That's the reason they are setting battles against you. But learn from me today. 
Joseph was there. They took his coat of many colors. They cast him into a pit. They sold him as a slave. Now, the people that bought him too did not see him as someone that can stay with them. They now got to Egypt and sold him again to somebody else. But hear me. The first lesson I want us to learn, Joseph did not allow his difficult condition to make him discouraged. That's the first thing. Whoever kills your courage has killed you. And can I tell you the truth? Nobody can kill your courage without your permission. And it's about piracy, right? Who they say into lagbara ti le pal pay into nje ireti laiga ye lowe ireti re o le ku afiti wo gomba gbala ye Joseph did not allow himself to be down. If he wanted to be down, he had reasons to be down because it was his blood brothers, the people that they gave back to them together, the same father. They treated him so harshly. Why? Because of his dream. When they took his coat of many colors, somebody will say, what other coat can he wear again? Now, that's enough for him to lose hope. But Joseph didn't lose hope. Joseph did not allow the spirit of discouragement. And I must tell you, church, you know what the devil is trying to do? Throwing all these things at you. One thing he wants to achieve. He wants you to stop. He wants you to be discouraged. Go look at the book of Genesis 11. You will see. That when the people were, were building a, a, a tall tower, the Bible says they were building this tower to reach the heavens. Even God said, with this thing they are doing, they will achieve it. Ah, one might achieve well. They will achieve it. They will achieve it. But look at this. God could not stop them. God said they will achieve it. If God could not stop them, will the devil be able to stop them? No, now. They will achieve it. But look at what stopped them. They stopped when they could no longer understand themselves. Progressive move will stop. Hear me. When you allow yourself to be discouraged. Now let me show you what it means to be discouraged. Hallelujah. A discouraged person is one who no longer sees light at the end of the tunnel for himself anymore. One who no, no, who no longer sees uh, uh, light at the end of the tunnel. A discouraged person is one who, lo who no longer sees hope. A discouraged person is one who have come to a point in his life and he has come to conclude that nothing good will happen again. Please, don't ever allow the devil to take you to that point. No matter what he's throwing at you, don't allow him to take you to that point. Because if you allow discouragement, discouragement will open three other doors. How many other doors? Three. Now, when you allow this God, I mean, look at the first door that we open. You will, you will lose your joy. That's the first thing. It will open the door of sorrow. A discouraged person is never happy. A discouraged person is never joyful. A discouraged person, you will notice that such a person will always be moody. Kusayomo. Kumajechikin kusayomo. Oti soletinu. His joy is dead. And can I tell you the truth? I read in the Bible, the Bible says the reason why the trees wither is not because God is not there. It's because their joy life is dead. Now, when you get discouraged, if it succeeds to kill your joy, the next thing is that it will change your language. Now, you will no longer be positive. And it told his story, you know, hey, le you will begin to hear words like, I've been in Nigeria, I've been in Nigeria, I've been in Nigeria, I've been in Nigeria, and he said, oh, no, she's not in Nigeria. God is not expecting you even now. Let me tell your neighbor, God is not expecting you now. If he's, tell him, if he's expecting you now, you don't need to die. He will just tell Jesus, oh, yeah, it's time. Angels, tell him, angels, blow the trumpet. Go and bring my people home. Tell her for him to delay the, the blowing of the trumpet, bounce of him. It means you are not needed in heaven now. Why are you thinking of death? You begin to hear that the language will begin to change. If Joseph had lost hope, I'm telling you the fact, he would not have labored the way he labored in the house of Potiphar that he became great. His joy will have, will have gone. 
There are people like that. I your want is so no. I, I know so many of them like that. I your want is so. There's nothing you can tell them about life that gives them joy again. And before you know it, like I said, it has gone to the second point. It has affected their language. No matter what you say, they don't speak positive anymore because their joy is dead. And what killed it? They allowed the challenges they are facing to make them lose hope. Who told you that God cannot show up again? Now, I want you to fast forward. Fast forward to the day that Joseph re uh, uh, introduced himself or revealed himself to his brothers. Now, just fast forward. Let's act it. Let's say I'm Joseph. He sat down like this. Don't forget that they have locked the brothers at the prison. All of them were there begging. Our college cop. He said, you know what? If I'm going to release you, do you still have a brother? They said, yes, there's one brother. His name is Benjamin. Go and bring him. Ah, if we bring him, what will happen? He has a brother. He died. And since he died, our father decided to take that one and keep him. He said, you know what? You need to go and bring that to your brother if you want me to release you. But for you to be sure, for me to be sure that you will return, I will lock one of you in the prison till you come. When they came, they brought Benjamin. Jacob had cried and cried and cried at home. Ha, ah, you are going with this Benjamin again. The only one that is left from the woman I love. Please, the Bible says he called unto, I think it is Judah, one of them. He said, make an oath for me that Benjamin will return. He said, my father, Benjamin will return. I bet on my life. Benjamin will return. Even Joseph did not reveal himself. When he came, the Bible says, when they came, all of them prostrate. They were lying down. The Bible says Joseph could not hold it. He ran inside the house and he wept. The Bible says he wept so loud that his slaves had to run to ask him, why are you crying? You know why he was crying? He was crying because he remembered the way he was sold. I'm speaking to somebody under the sound of my voice. Everyone mocking you today because you refuse to give up. My God will so much lift you and decorate you that they will come to beg from you very soon in the name of Jesus. But don't forget, you must not lose hope. And Joseph sat down. When he came back from crying, he sat down. Let's act it. And those men, all of them prostrate. The Bible says he wept again. You know why he wept? He remembered his dreams. Ah, Allah told to read a book to me. They want to read for me. You know, he was looking at them. He was calm. And when all of them were begging, he told them, he said, come closer. They came closer. I said, come closer. They came closer. He said, look at my face. They looked at his face. Do you know me? I believe they look at him. You know, wealth used to change people. I was looking at one of us during his birthday. I wanted to show him his picture of 20 years ago. If I show him his picture of 20 years ago, I will show you your own. <laughs> the day you joined the church at your 50th birthday. But if you see his picture and now you will say, no, this one is not him. So they couldn't recognize him because wealth has changed him. Do you know me? They said, no, sir. We cannot look into your face, sir. They told us that you are next to Pharaoh. They told us that you are next to Pharaoh. They told us that you are next to Pharaoh. He said, I am Joseph. The one whom you sold. What do you think will happen at that moment? You say, no. Benjamin will say, I knew he was my brother. I was looking at his face. I was looking at his face. This is my brother. Now, while all of them were panicking, they were panicking because they were thinking of Joseph or revenge. He said, you, you, you sold me, but God decided to send me ahead in order to preserve my father's generation. Go tell my father that I'm not dead, that I'm alive. But beloved, what if he had allowed himself to be discouraged? The third thing that discouragement will do, don't forget, number one, it takes your joy. Number two, it Changes your language. Number three, it makes you think of, de think of death. Once you lose hope, you, have, you begin to feel that there's no reason to live again. 
qui est entier Kougan Qui est entier Kougan Je suis satan, il fait que je l'ai Qui est entier Kougan Je me suis dit, je several times. Qui est entier Kougan Et pas moi, il y a Isaïa Dani Baye. Qui est entier Kougan Imagine que tu Kougan Baye. Tani ou Bagbo Moïda Ni. That's what discouragement does. You feel that, what am I living for? You think those people that go to jump to lagoon, those that go to hang themselves, you think there was a special devil speaking to them? It was the spirit of discouragement. It will show you that you do not have any other reason to remain alive again. And you know why it will be showing you? It will be showing you through what people are saying against you and what people are doing towards you. You now begin to feel useless. You begin to feel empty. Pastor, imagine I have children. I have children. My children are doing well. Can you imagine? My children did not even think of me anymore. The devil want to make you feel discouraged. I read the story of that man. Ibadan man, former military man, that married the Awusa lady that he killed in the U.S. The man was doing well in Nigeria. Got married to this young lady. And he they had three children. And he made up his mind. He said, well, to encourage you, my wife and children, let's, let me relocate you abroad. The story went viral now. You must have read it on, on the internet. And he relocated his family to America. He's remained in Nigeria. He, he rented the house and was paying from Nigeria to, in America. Moved the three children there. Then the woman, because she's an industrious woman, she knows how to plate air. She started plating and started doing braiding for people in America. Started doing braiding for people in America. And all of a sudden, her customers was increasing, was increasing, was increasing. She bought a house. Her husband was still sending money to them because the man was okay here. Then all this jackpot thing began to come. You need to jackpot. Your family is here. You need to go and meet them. Your family is here. You need to go. So he had to relocate. Sold everything he had. Got abroad. But things were not as it were for him in Nigeria abroad. So he started doing small, small job. Then his income could not meet that of the wife. And I've always told you, a woman cannot be the breadwinner for too long. Every man that is here, wake up. A woman cannot be the breadwinner for too long. She was never programmed to be the breadwinner of the house. What a husband can give his wife as his responsibility, if the woman do it for some time, she will talk. Because she was not built for it. So words began to come. Useless man. You are not up to my level. Not up to my standard. I don't know what kind of man you are. But then the devil came with the voice of discouragement. The same energy that you channeled in being discouraged, you can channel it to be encouraged to do the right thing. I'm talking to the men here. Instead of saying, I'm angry. My wife is talking to me anyhow. No. Instead of getting angry that she's used that same energy to go and prosper. Then the woman bought the second house, moved her children, and told the man, please, I bought that house for my business. Don't come, except you are invited. And all of a sudden, after some months, he called the man, I've just sold that house where you are living. And I want to tell you that this relationship cannot continue. Because the man was already soaked with the spirit of discouragement, he went to buy a gun. Drove to the house, knocked the door, went to meet her in the bedroom, shot her dead. She shot her, called the American police, and told them, I have just killed the bitch. Come and arrest me now. Listen, the spirit of discouragement is a terrible spirit. I can't promise you that people will not hurt you. I can't promise you that people will not despise you. I can't promise you that. But you are responsible for the way you handle the way people treat you. I've been in the meeting before now. I was invited by a man of God. And I sat 
quietly somewhere. He told them to go and tell me that that's not my seat. I left. Then the owner of the usher saw me. That's Pastor Prince. He brought me to the front. The man of God looked at me and said, Pastor, that's not your seat. You are not in my program. Please move him. And they moved, this is, <laughs> and they moved me to another back seat. He said, no, that seat is for some social centers of people. Move. I know what I did. I carried my Bible. You will inject me. I will not feel discouraged that you have two cars. I'm working with my leg. It does not make you greater than me. God does not weigh success by material things. People will treat you the way you don't like. But your heart is your own heart. It is you that will determine the way you see it. Joseph refused to be discouraged. Say, I refuse to be discouraged. Shout it like you mean it. So don't let it drive you to the point where you no longer see purpose for living. Hope. Hope. Laughing. Jade. To keep your hope alive. And what keeps our hope alive? Can I tell you? What should make our hope to remain? Our dreams. Don't let anything make you forget your dream. Even if they call you stupid, foolish, useless, let your dream tell you that I am not useless. Many years ago, uh, what's her name? Uh, she sang this song. I want to suffer more useless. Baba suffer more useful. I want to suffer more worthless. Baba suffer more worthful. What's her name again? Shenwele Jesu. If hope had died, Joseph will have died on the way to Egypt. But his hope was alive. It moved him to number two. What do you do in difficult season? Don't forget number one. In difficult season, you don't lose hope. Even if your, your meal does not complete three, don't lose hope. I will remind you the song of the Yinka, this great Yinka Yefele of now. In those days, his first song. Don't forget. Don't forget. Hey, down me. Ah. Charlie Owadu. The only man that has multiple radio stations in the same country. They are going state by state. And if I talk, you want to put it on. What makes us succeed is not natural things. I told us last week Sunday. It's our relationship with God. So maintain it. And you know when you maintain your relationship with God, he will be showing you dreams. He's the master of dreams. He will be showing you dreams. He will be showing you dreams that will keep you alive. Yes, I just saw this dream. I just saw this dream. You know, I just, you, it is dreams that keeps us going. When I sat down here, now you know what I was looking at? I was looking at our cathedral. Where we we'll put, uh, yeah, I was looking at this particular logo. Where we we'll just, we don't need to use mouth to say, please don't let children come here. We we'll just put the logo, adults. Dress them where they will be coming to sit. Those that have children will put a logo that has a mother that carries children. This is where you will sit. We are going there. But if you stop dreaming, beloved, nothing can stop you from dying. Number two, Joseph did not agree to follow shortcuts. When I say shortcuts, I bracket it sinful cuts. When things are difficult, please don't follow the path of sin. It will cut you short from following God. Let me show you the shortcut that was introduced to Joseph. Genesis 39, 7 to 10. I want us to read it and read it now like a drama. Because when I was preparing, I was preparing it like a drama. Let's not just read it religiously. Genesis 30, where are you now? 39, 7 to 10. You know that song? I know you will know it. Born to win, born to rain in Christ. Prepare it down for me. I'm coming to it. Don't sing. Don't sing. Or else you'll be caught. You won't listen to the message. Look at it. Now, let's listen. And it came to pass 
after these things, that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, lie with me. Wait. Do you think she will start by using words? Mm, no, no. Let's be sincere. You are working in the house and the madam of the house is in love with, loves you. She won't start by using words. She will start by traps. Joseph! 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 Ma! Or madam! You know, in Igbo language, if they call you, you call back. How are you? Balaman down, sir. Joseph! Madam! So, Joseph! Madam! Uh, bring um, um, water for me. Uh, yes, ma! Yes, ma! And while he's bringing water, Tobel will just fall down. Ah! Sorry, ma! Sorry, ma! Sorry, ma! Before madame will talk, she must have tried every method. Ah, ah. This boy did not fall. This boy did not fall. Okay? Um, Joseph! Maybe another time. Joseph! Ma! Come and massage this leg for me. I don't know. This thing is just paining me. Yes, ma. Oh, yeah. Do it to this side, this side. Take it higher, this side, this side. Wait, do you think Joseph is a spirit? He's man. It takes a lot of self-discipline not to follow shortcut. I made up my mind that I want to be a Nigerian with a difference. I started about six years ago that I won't drive against traffic again. But it's not easy. Because if you are driving in somewhere around Apata, you will, you will look and look and look. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are, ah, Nigeria. It's not easy to be righteous in Nigeria. Imagine I went to the embassy. I wanted my visa to be approved. I got there. They said I didn't have a, a um, they call it a yellow card. They said I should go and get it and it will be closing by 2. And it was around 10. I got to the embassy uh, 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 hospital. I was number 167. Ah! I said, okay, let's do as we used to do in Nigeria. So I took my international passport. I put 3,000 there inside. I went to the gate man. I said, see. He just said, follow me. And I became number one. <laughs> it's not easy to be righteous in Nigeria. It takes a lot of self-discipline. It's not easy, oh. But you know, six years ago, I made up my mind. I mean, they tell you all those shortcuts, you know? Now, look at what Joseph must have faced. In the hands of Potiphar's wife. We wanted to get an approval from the government. So we got to the Ministry of Works. They said I should go and pay tax. How much? They said 120000 When I was going, one of the officials of the Ministry of Works called me and said, Oh, lay to your God, me. And yes, I'll be me wa, I'll wa. Arabic commercial about some tax it and income before to the co in beating is a headache by prova thing in fact back only ball pastor name only ah I'm a young one that is shifu will let your college and battle it was no easy oh I had to gather all my savings to pay that tax one thirty thousand eventually it was one thirty five but I, because I made up my mind six years ago, say, I don't want to follow shortcuts. You know what shortcuts we do? It will cut you from following God. And if you are caught from the back, from following God, that is taking you somewhere, then you go nowhere anymore. Let's read on. So Joseph, oh, try. Okay, listen to some of you. See, if I touch intelligent shortcut, you are saying, Pastor, it's not easy to follow the right cut. That's why I want to show you that it's not easy. But you have to take, you have to discipline yourself. Let's go. Verse, uh, 
verse 8. We have read verse 7. But he refused. After Madame now came up and said, Joseph. Now, listen. Do you think Madame will just come up and say, Joseph, I love you? Madame will start with her job. With his job. Joseph. All this way you are just running around, running around, running around, running around, and you are getting peanuts. See, if you lie with me, you know your boss doesn't have time. Just one night, you become a millionaire. In fact, I even heard that you are not an Egyptian. When have you seen your father last? When did you see your people last? I heard that your mommy is dead. Don't worry, all those things become things of the past. Small thing. Just come into the room. Look at what Joseph faced in that house. And one will be telling him, Joseph, Joseph, a lot of lying. People go family in Terry Bafoe. He be told him, I share it. To Bafoe, if you are a and go and look at the profile of Potiphar. Potiphar was the army commander. It's like the chief of staff of the whole Egypt. That would have been a fake glory. And can I tell you the truth? Fake glory doesn't last. I wonder. What if it? Let's finish the reading. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, he came out bluntly, Behold, my master watered not what is with me in the house, and he had committed all things he had to my hand. Next verse, next verse. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither had he kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife. How dare then can I do this great wickedness? And do what? And sin against the God that is taking me on a journey. God is taking me somewhere. I will get there. Are you sure? I will get there. God has taken me somewhere. God is taking me somewhere. I will get there. I will get there. I will get there. But if you follow shortcuts, sinful cuts, you won't get there. Because sin will disconnect you from God. Now, imagine how much would Madame had given to Joseph. And can I tell you this truth? One thing I discovered about sin is that the secret of sin does not last for too long. Somehow, somehow, and who even knows if Joseph had even gone into Madame, Maybe what Madame have seen in Joseph will have just ended. And after it, he just said, ah, ordinary slave. Come and get out of my room. Emma just saw to the king Nigeria at the one day by Kawama by short court. But when he turned Taja, a long rock and do see no Congo. Short court, he lent by a young to rise to look because I go to me while Laura made Johnny a tafon. And if you can't do your magic home bed, short cut in it. You can't make yourself. Let God be the one making you. He's our maker. You know, when God is the one making you, there's no repercussion. But if you follow sinful cuts, there's what? You are not talking to me. So tell your neighbor, don't follow short cut. I didn't hear. I said, don't follow shortcut. Let's take one more. Let's take one more. Ah, there's no time. I have just two minutes to go. Let's just take this one more. I'll stop with one. Number three. Joseph, in his difficult times, did not joke with his work. 
He was so diligent to the point that God kept blessing him greatly. Genesis chapter 39, 1 to 6. What do we do in difficult times? Face your work. Those of you that are students, read well, study well. You are into business. Do your business diligently. You earn salary. Work with the whole of your heart. See Genesis 39 from verse 1. Be fast. I don't have all the time. I have just two minutes more. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guards, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought, brought him down Tida. And what now happened? And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house, sorry, and he was in the house of Joseph, uh, of, so he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. You know why God prospered? God doesn't prosper the lazy. We are playing draft in the afternoon. These are things they do in the night. Or things they do in the evening. Or in the weekends. Why do sit at Lolo Song? To Yekuma crack brain, epi. Bow on the business, it's too much. He lost the next level. Ah, check Pari, ah, check Pari, Mark Beko. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all that he, he was. He did, did, D I D. Solo, uh, Muni Solo. Joseph did something. Emma Binuti or Riba Tagbain, most of you, Uyibo Momo from Facebook, Kali Chima Simon, Asi Kuba, two year care, Fima, she share, Abike Marunu, Tisha Yima, she lost it, Kele Keji, what a great television or phone for you. See, can I tell you this truth? The havoc this internet thing will cause to African youths. We can't know it until in 10 years' time. They are killing our creativity. You don't, you don't become creative if you cannot think. In those days, there was no telev television on, on our phones. When we are, we, we are less busy, we think of how to improve our lives. But what about today? People are watching serious movies. Where? On their phone. Uh, it should then buy one shade other. I want Philippines. I want Indians. I want Koreans. Uh -huh. Kill it to man go. That's why. You know what they said now? They said data is life. The money they make from data is more than the money they make from fuel. I know what they are doing. They are killing our creative instincts. Oh, you both feel wasi leo. Eruke go independence. Oh, you feel wasi leo. Go bon tafi mama sin won. Tafi mama jeru fun won. Oh, no she in she. But you think you are enjoying yourself. And they will keep posting it. Imagine somebody three hours on the phone. Not that you are doing business on your phone. No, three hours. The devil doesn't want you to create time to think again. Put the after 10 years. Kato is in guru. But you can disconnect yourself. Joseph did. And God blessed. If you are not doing, there is nothing God can bless. I told them in our church, at the Alebu church where I preached this morning, I'm rounding up. That I was telling my wife, we were driving home yesterday, and this very big, long truck that carries cement was coming out of a level. And I said to my wife, This truck is empty coming out, it was filled going in, it comes to a level every day, very long. It means even in the scarcity. They are selling cement. You didn't hear me. It means some people are still building. It means some people are not feeling it. Walk your way out of scarcity. Did you hear me? Born to win. Let's be on our feet. Born to reign in life. 
I'm not an ordinary person. I'm destined. Don't be telling drums. Born to win. I just want to hear the keyboard. Born to win in life. I'm not an ordinary person. I'm not an ordinary person. I am destined for greatness. Thank you. Have you learned something this afternoon? Please don't let your hope die. Joe. Tell you, come on, get in engineer and smart, commit suicide. But you are ponzi. No matter what they are throwing at you, absorb it. I had the story of a donkey that fell into a pit. Oh, I read it in a book. And that donkey could not come out. And when people go there, they see it. Ah, I will get a get any new koto. Koto ila man dale si. E ya dale so li e kukusi be. Nobati dale so li kete kete ye bae. O ma akbonra. Agon. E lo mi atu de. Kete kete ye. Po iku. E dale si. On ba dale si. Atu akbonra. Ile ada si le. Atu akbonra. But she ain't alone, but alone go to feed okay. Kilo in kilo in jerky or a town when you're so ma kuma twain. Kuama runuti on a mini. Toba sorrow, more than no. Golie. Ask my wife and children. Life with a miss simple. Go sing contest of my feet, yellow lassie for the bunny. Beat a miserine. That was it. That's Listen, if they succeed to discourage you, they have gotten you. Discouragement is not in my diary. Will you continue to prosper? I didn't hear you. Will you, long, will, you long, will you no longer bother what people are saying? I bless you today in the name of Jesus. As you go into this new week, I declare that you are blessed in the name of Jesus. Every plans of the devil against you, prevail over them in Jesus' name. Enter into the purpose of God for your life in the name of Jesus. You will overcome this season. I say you will prevail over this season. I say you are blessed. I say you are favored. Lines are falling onto you in pleasant places in the name of Jesus. I bless this week for you in the name of Jesus. All you lay your hands upon to do this week shall prosper. Your going and coming back is blessed. It is well with you in Jesus' precious name. We are prayed and amen. Hold hands with somebody as we share the grace together.